Hello everyone! Welcome to another session of Feast at Home. And for those of you who are watching, I'd like to greet you good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending kung kailan nyo pinapanood itong video na ito at kung nasa ang parte ka ng mundo. And can you do me a favor? Can you please type in where are you watching right now so that our brothers and sisters can know kung sino at nasaan kayo lahat ngayon. You know, we're a community here kahit na tayo nasa ibang lugar. Amen? Eh, pakitype lang kung saan kayo galing. And bago ako mag-umpisa sa talk natin ngayong araw na ito, gusto ko lang muna kayo kamustahin. Nakita na natin, unti-unti na nagbubukas ang mga opisina, mga mall, mga restaurants, at unti-unti na nating sinusubukan bumangon mula sa krisis at pandemic na ito. And I have noticed this. Things may have changed a lot. Ang daming nagbago na. But I believe in this. There's one thing that is constant, and there's one thing that will never change. You know what it is? That is God's Word. In fact, Isaiah 40 verse 8 says this, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the Word of our God stands forever. Hindi nagbabago. And my prayer is this, Sana panghawakan natin yan para hindi tayo mawalan ng pag-asa. And this is the reason why we are doing Feast at Home. Why? We want to preach the Word of God. Kahit na sinarado yung mga venues natin, hindi tayo nagpapigil. Gumawa tayo ng paraan so that all of us can still gather strength from God's Word. Amen? And right now, we are continuing our series entitled Best Preaching Ever. At nasa talk 10 na tayo. And our talk title for today is Jump Over Fences. Bakit yan ang title? Maintindihan natin yan as we go along with this talk. But before that, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Together, let's make the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hands and pray this with me. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor God's Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, we are still diving deeper and deeper into the Gospel of Matthew. At nandito na tayo, patapos na tayo sa Sermon on the Mount where Jesus was explaining to us how to fulfill the purpose behind these six laws, namely the law on murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, the law on revenge, and the law on hating your enemies. And today, ang pag-uusapan natin is Jesus' recommendation on how we should deal with our enemies. Pero bago tatin pag-usapan niyang law na ito, gusto ko muna i-recap yung napag-usapan natin last week. Why? Kasi yung napag-usapan natin last week, it is directly linked. It's a continuation of what we are going to talk about. Sorry, the, the talk today is a continuation of what we have talked about last week. At last week, pinag-usapan natin yung law of revenge in which Jesus challenged us to reject retaliation. Sa Tagalog, wag ka nang gumante, wag ka nang pumatol, wag ka nang patola. And interestingly, our word last week is coming from Matthew 5.38 verse 38 to 41, which says, If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Take note, during Jesus' time, kinongkar, sinakop sila ng mga Romans. And you see, because they were conquered during that time, Itong pagsampal, pagkuha ng t-shirt, pagpapabuhat ng gamit, lahat yan, komo na nararanasan ng mga hudyo during Jesus' time. Nararanasan nila yan mula sa mga Roman soldiers. Kaya, interestingly, ang sabi ni Jesus dito, pag sinampal ka, turn the other cheek. 
Pag kinuha yung shirt mo, bigay mo pati yung coat mo. Kapag pinabuhat sa'yo ng one mile, carry it another extra mile. Take note, nabanggit na natin to last week. Jesus was not saying, be a doormat, be a pushover, magpaabuso ka. No, that's not the point. In fact, Jesus was just simply telling us that when somebody hurts you, wag ka nang gumante. Yun lang naman. Because you are bigger than this. You are bigger than your hurt. And take note, Jesus was not saying that you do nothing. Nahayaan mo lang abusuhin ka. No, 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 no. In fact, Jesus' challenge was even greater. Mas mahirap. Bakit? Because Jesus was saying, you need to do something. You're bigger than this. You're a giant. You need to agape your enemy. Sabi nyo nga, agape. Ano yung agape na yan? It's another term for love. Pero anong klaseng love? Mamaya i-explain yan ng mga preachers after me. But, you see, ito nga yun eh. Sinasabi ni Jesus last week, you must not retaliate. Huwag kang gumante, huwag kang pumatol. Pero ito yung mas mahirap. Bakit? Kasi sa law on hating your enemies, mas grabe yung sinasabi ni Jesus. And I want us to read our word for today. Basahin natin. Matthew 5:43 to 48. You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For He gives sunlight to both the evil and the good, and He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow! Grabe, what a tall order from Jesus. Hindi lang niya tayo sinabihan na gumante, wag gumante. He, now, He is telling us, you need to love your enemy. Amen? Now, can I invite you into prayer? And as we ask God to give us the grace to love our enemies, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lift your hands, sorry, put your hands over your hearts and say this prayer after me. Jesus, help me to love my enemies. I know it's difficult to forgive. I know it's difficult to forget. And it's almost impossible to love my enemy. That's why I humbly ask for your supernatural grace to forgive and to love them. Fill me with your agape so I can agape them as well. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right. Be excited for this wonderful talk. This is going to be a heart-wrenching and daming i-reveal sa atin, Lord. Mahirap, pero kailangan nating marinig. But before I hand you over to my co-preachers and co-builders, let me give you a few announcements before we move on. Alam nyo, nakakatuwa, at this week lang merong nag-viral sa social media itong picture na ito ng mama na ito. And nakita niyo yan, itong mama na ito, may, medyo matanda na, may edad na. At makikita ninyo, nagtuto siyang magbisikleta. May balancer pa sa tabi. Kailangan gumawa ng paraan para pumasok sa trabaho. And you see, things like this, alam nyo, ang, sa akin, ang dating nitong picture na ito, itong mama na ito, talagang gumagawa siya ng paraan para, para, para buhayin yung pamilya niya. And that's what I believe in, brothers and sisters. Kapag grabe yung pagmamahal sa puso mo, hahanap at hahanap ka ng paraan. Hindi ka susuko. And I believe love always finds a way. The same thing with generosity. Generosity always finds a away. That's why I'd like to personally thank everyone who have been giving 
here at the feast, na kahit na tayo ay na-lockdown, yung iba natuto pa silang mag-online giving just to give. Because that's what Christ followers do. We find a way because there's so much love in our hearts. And I encourage you, and I would like to thank you as well, for continuously giving to the feast. Continuously giving your tithes. Kat alam ko, lahat tayo hirap, pero nakakatuwa. Lahat tayo gumagawa rin ng paraan so that we can help each other. We can extend our, we can help um, spread the word of God through our online ministry. And so I encourage you to continue to live generous lives, especially during this season, so that we can sustain our ministry and we can help and support more people. For more information, if you would like to give, I know you will give because you will find a way please click the link down below, feastalabang.com slash give. And alam nyo, maraming paraan so how we can give. Three ways, we can give through credit card, we can give through bank deposit in our district account, and we can also give via GCash or online transfer. So again, love, generosity, it always finds a way. And thank you to all those who have been finding ways to bless other people. Let the Lord bless you. Tayo ang Diyos na ang bahala sa inyo. Amen? Salamat po sa mga nagbibigay. Another thing is this. I'd like to invite all the singles and young adults to this uh, online talk on July 4, 2020 entitled Adulting in the New Normal. Alam ko, mahirap nang mag-adulting, lalo pa ngayon sa new normal. That's why we have devised this talk, we have arranged this talk, our singles ministry and young adults ministry has arranged this talk in order for us to to help more singles and young adults on how to conquer their responsibilities, lalo pat ngayon medyo nagkakaedad tayo. And we have a special speaker during that time on July 4. Sino yan? Walang iba kundi ako. <laughs> Hindi. Ako po, eh, along with my good friend, Love Kosho. So, I'd like you to, to, to comment down below if you are interested in to into this event and let our engagers, our singles engagers, um, jump into you and then get your details so you can join this online talk. This is for free, by the way. We hope that you can join us. Also, uh, I'd like us to, I'd like you to follow our new feast online schedules. Um, hindi na po tayo yung katulad ng dati na hiwahiwalay na feast, but we now have two, sorry, three sessions for the district. And we have English sessions and we also have Taglish sessions. The English sessions will be at 9, 4, and 8 o'clock. And the Taglish sessions will be at 10.30, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. So you can catch our Taglish sessions every Sunday through the Feast Bikutan page, 10.30, 2 o'clock, and 6 p.m. You can also catch it, it at Feast South Mall page, 10.30, 2 o'clock, and 6 as well. And you can also catch it at the Feast Bellevue AM page at 10.30, 2, and 6 o'clock, uh, respectively. And also, the English Feast, you can also join us. Saan? Kung gusto nyo ng English, you would like to under... Nahirapan kayo sa pagtatagalog ko. Uh, you can visit the pages of Feast Bellevue PM and Feast Bellevue AM. It's happening at 9 a.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. And we also have a midweek feast at Wednesday Feast Festival uh, Alabang page. You can visit it at 7.30 p.m. wherein Brother J. Ogawin will be with you along with Brother Arun and me. Ayan po. So experience Jesus wherever you are. Please do watch our online feast. And last but not the least, can you do me a little favor before I turn you over? Nakikita nyo dun sa lower left button ng inyong, ng inyong screen ng mobile phone niyo. Meron dung share button. Pwede bang pakiclick lang yon? That simple click can make the word of God famous. And it can send, it can bless a lot of people in your feed, your friends and family. So can you do us a favor? Do God a favor. Share and click that link and click that button below. Amen? Now, we go into our talk proper, and I'd like to turn you over to my brother builders, Brother James and Brother Arun. There's this priest who is having his homily using a particular scripture that we have today. And he asked the congregation, Samia, how many of you have lots of 
enemies. Tapos nakita niya, about one-third of the congregation raised their hands. Tapos tinanong niya ulit sila, sabi niya, sino naman sa inyong walang masyadong kaaway? Or, kaunti lang yung kaaway. Tapos nakita niya, about one-third of the congregation raised their hands again. And finally, he asked, sino naman sa inyo ang walang kaaway? So, tinignan niya, aba, parang walang nagtataas ng kamay. Pero may may nakita niya, unti-unti, dun sa harap niya, Si Mang Max nagtaas ng kamay. At dahil natuwa siya, lumapit siya sa matanda. Sabi niya, Mang Max, kilalang kilala kita. Kasi lagi ka nandito sa misang ito. Sabi niya, what is your secret? At wala kang kaaway. Sagot ni Mang Max, Father, I'm 95 years old. Wow! Sabi niya, siguro, Mang Max, dahil 95 ka na, grabe na yung wisdom na nakuha mo, kaya nasusundan mo na yung utos ni Jesus. Sabi ni Mang Max, Hindi, Father. Sabi niya, ano sikreto mo? Sabi niya, Father, 95 na po ako at lahat ng buwisit sa buhay ko, patay na. <laughs> Alam mo, naniniwala ko that while Weldon was reading our scripture today, mayroong mga taong pumasok sa isip ninyo. Yung, yung isang tao na maaring in-unfriend mo sa Facebook or sa Twitter or, or in any social media. May isang taong pumasok sa isip mo na matagal mo nang iniiwasan na huwag sana kayong magkita sa mall or sa daan. Or isang taong matagal mo nang pinagdarasal na sana huwag umatend ng feast kasi baka makasama mo pa sa langit. Friends, do you have enemies? Meron ka bang kaaway? If you have then let us preach this big message to you today. Agape, your enemy. Gusto sana himayin yung, yung scripture reading natin. Taken from Matthew 5 verse 43. And Jesus said, You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Alam mo, imagine ko while, while Jesus was saying these words, siguro sabi ng mga nakikinig sa kanya, Alam na namin yan. Alam na namin yan, Jesus. Bata pa lang kami, narinig na namin yan. These words were drilled in our, in our head, in our ears, by our parents. Alam na namin yan. Nasa textbooks na, textbook natin yan. Nasa curriculum natin yan. Yung parang katulad natin, di ba, bata pa lang tayo, alam na natin yung alphabet song. Bata pa lang tayo. Kaya kabisado natin yung kanta. Yung A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, N, Y, C, la, 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 pa, Parang mali yata, no? Pa, Jack and Jill yata yung rhyme na yun. Ha? Pero alam na natin yung ABC. Alam na natin yung kantang yan. Di ba? Kantayin nyo nga. A, B, C, D. <laughs> parang Jack and Jill pa rin. Ha? Sige, pag nakanta nyo nga ng tama, pakicomment nyo nga dyan sa comment box ninyo. Sabihin nyo, Brother James, nakanta namin ng tama. Ikaw lang ang nakalimot. Ha? Friends, here's my question to you. Is this sentences or sentence found in the Old Testament? Hindi yung ABC. <laughs> yung sinabi ni Jesus. You know, if you've noticed, in the previous five times, Jesus said, you have heard the law. In our past five talks, He's using a verse or paraphrasing a verse that you can can be that you can see in the Torah. Ano yung Torah? This is the Hebrew Bible, the first five books in the Hebrew Bible. In our in our Bible, in a Christian Bible, we call this the Old Testament or the Pentateuch. Makikita mo yan, yung itong sinabi ni, Lord, ni Jesus na ito. And you can see that either in Genesis, in Exodus, in Leviticus, in Numbers, or in De- Deuteronomy. But this time, wala kang makikita ang exact line no sinabi ni Jesus that you love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Wala kang makikita in any of these five books. So, anong ginagawa ni Jesus dito? And here's my answer. He makes a command from the scripture and the popular saying during their time. Ano yung Scripture. San, ano yung sinabi doon sa scripture? Love your neighbor. Makikita mo yan sa scripture. And the popular saying is hate your 
enemy. Saan natin, maki- saan natin makikita yan? This particular word, love your neighbor. We can see that in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. And it says here, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. Makikita natin yan dyan, in Leviticus. Now, yung saying naman, saan natin makikita yung saying? Hate your enemy. You know, during Jesus' time, there is this debate or raging debate among the rabbis, yung mga teachers of the law. At ito yung debate nila. If God wants us to love our neighbor, then the big question is, who is my neighbor? Sino ba yung neighbor ko? Maraming rabbis, in the time of Jesus, ang sagot nila nung about this particular question, siguro ang sasagutin nila, kailangan pa ba i-memorize yan? Hindi na. Obvious naman eh. Nakalagay sa Leviticus. Diba? Ano nakalagay doon? Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite. Kaya, doon sa first group of rabbis, for them, sino yung neighbor natin? Ay, our fellow Jews. Anong ginagawa nila? This particular group of the rabbis. They're limiting their neighbor to those who are near and dear to them. Yung mga malapit sa kanila. At dito, naniniwala ako, madali tayong makarelate. Ang dali natin makarelate. Bakit? Kasi we love our tribes. Daba? We love our tribe. Yung halimbawa, I don't know if you have experienced this. Yung nagmamadali ka, pupunta ka sa ibang bansa, nandun ka sa airport, dumaan ka doon sa isang custom official na medyo makita mo, medyo masungit, tapos nagdali, nagmamadali ka, lumapit kasi mo, ah, excuse me, where is gate 5? I'm, I'm just rushing. Tapos dahil medyo masungit siya, sabi niya, ah, can you wait? Because uh, we need to check you. Yung ganyan, kasi nakita mo, may siguro, may initang ulo, baka may problema. Tapos maya maya, mayroong isang babae, sumingit sa'yo, nagmamadali din, siguro kasama mo dun sa aeroplano, tapos ang sabi sa kanya, <coughs> excuse me, where is gate 5? <coughs> gate 5. Suri. <laughs> tapos sabi nitong, nitong, nitong custom official, same custom official, ay, bisaya ka gid. Pasok na gid, pasok na. Eh, yung gano'n, yung parang, Hello, pares na kami ng tinatanong, pero bakit, bakit siya pinapasok mo agad? Nakakatawa, di ba? Pero minsan ganyan tayo. Ganyan tayo. Yung mas madali tayo magbigay ng pabor doon sa kalahi natin. Ang dali natin magbigay ng pabor doon sa kauri natin. Ang dali natin magbigay ng pabor doon sa kasapi natin. That's, that's why you will understand this first group of rabbis. When, when they said, ay, ang mamahalin natin ay yung ating kapwa, the fellow Jews. And beyond that, ay, pwede natin di mahalin. We can hate them as our enemies. Dahil meron din tayong kailangan maintindihan in this particular group of people because they've experienced so much um, so much difficulties in their lives. Ang tagal nilang panahon na sila ay in captivity. Ang dami nilang kalaban. Dumaan sa kanila yung Babylonian, yung Assyrian, yung Greek, yung Roman. Lahat ng yan. Inalipin sila. That's why, for them, ang neighbor ko lang, my fellow Jews. The rest, they can be my enemy. And I can hate my enemy. But there's a particular group, another group of rabbis. Sa kanila, iba naman. They expanded the meaning of neighbor. They just continue the words in Leviticus in verse 33 and 34. It says here, Do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like a native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. <clears throat> Remember that you were once foreigner living in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. So dito sa isang group ng rabbis na ito, they believe that they're supposed to love the Gentiles. Yung isa, fellow Jews lang. Itong isa, kasama yung Gentiles. But here's a shocking revelation. <laughs> Alala nyo? Sa fees, di ba? Pag sabi kong shocking, anong ginagawa ninyo? <gasps> Yan, dapat nakaganyan kayo. Ha? Shocking revelation. 
Habang nagbo-boxing, itong dalawang grupo ng rabbis na ito, alam mo ang ginawa ni Jesus? Dumabas siya doon sa, sa, sa boxing ring. Lumabas siya doon sa boxing arena. And he expanded the definition of who our neighbor is. At sino ang ating neighbor according to Jesus? Our neighbor includes our enemy. Yung ating kaaway. Now, here's my question to you, friends. Where in the world did Jesus get that crazy idea? Saan nakuha ni Jesus? Saan nakuha ni Jesus? I got this from two distinct sources. Two distinct sources. Number one, the first source na pinakuhanan ni Jesus is this. How nature reveals God's love. Paanong yung ating nature pinapakita yung pag-ibig ng Diyos? Sabi ni Jesus, If you love your neighbor in that way, or your enemy in that way, you will be acting as a true children of God. Or true ch- ch- children of the Father in heaven. For He gives His sunlight to both the evil and the good, and His saints reign on the just and the unjust alike. Di ba nakakasyak yun? Nakakasyak? Alam nyo, during the time of Jesus, and even today, after 2,000 years, marami pa rin naniniwala that God is like a Santa Claus. Yung, He's making a list and checking it twice. Is gonna find out who's naughty or nice. God the Father is coming to town. Yeah, pasensya na kayo, medyo sa tagal ng ating, uh, ating pagka-quarantine feeling ko, Christmas na. You know, we believe, or some people believe, that God blesses the good and curses those people who are bad. Marami taong naniniwala dyan. But is this true? Totoo ba ito? You know, it's easy to debunk this particular idea. If you look at the scripture, like the story of Job, there's a story na talagang makikita mo doon, particular story about this righteous man, a good person, but he suffered great difficulties. Masunuri na tao. Grabe, masunurin, but God allowed him to experience great sufferings. So, dito pa lang, ay, guho na yung, yung idea na yan, That God blesses the good and curses the bad. Doon pa lang. But, there's another way that can really debunk this idea. And what is that? Tumingin ka. Sa nature. How the nature works. Napansin nyo ba, na parehas yung hangin na hinihingan ninyo nung kaaway mo. You have, you're breathing the same oxygen. Parehas lang kayo na hinihinga. Yung bang kaaway mo, ibang hinihinga niya sa hinihinga mo. Imaginein mo, kunyari yung hinihinga niya, no, pag bad, pag bad yung tao, ang hinihinga niya, hindi oxygen kundi helium. Ha? Imaginein mo, siguro, pagka, nag, pagka nagkita kayo, nung mahal mo sa buhay na may kasalanan, pwede mo sabihin, ay, may ginawa kang kalukuhan, ano? may kasalanan ka. Tapos ano sagot niya? Paano mo nalaman? Mapaghusga ka, wala akong kasalanan. Yung ganun, no? parang lumiliit yung boses. Ha? Yung, nag-iiba yung boses, bakit helium kasi yung inihinga niya? Or, Imaginein, imaginein mo na kunyari yung tao bad, tapos ang ginawa ng Diyos, um, pag may kasalanan ka, yung iyong gravitational pull, mas lesser kumpara dun sa good. Ha, dun sa mabubuting tao. Siguro ang dali mong sabihin dun sa mahal mo sa buhay na, na nagkasala, may kasalanan ka, no? Tapos tanong niya, bakit? Paano mo naraman may kasalanan ako mapanghusga ka? Wala akong kasalanan. Anong wala? Kita mo, hay ka, <laughs> lutang ka. Pero, hindi tama, di ba? Hindi, hindi, mali. Si Jesus tama. When He said, For He gives the sunlight to both the evil and the good, and He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. 
you know, I'm, I'm amazed at how Jesus saw God's love in nature. Jesus saw a God-saturated world where everything, every breath, every star, every tree, every meal was pregnant with God's love. He saw the Father everywhere. Alam mo sa tingin ko, kailangan nating matutunan itong view na ito ni Jesus. That this is a God-saturated world we are living in. And for us to, to have the same world view, we need to know where Jesus got this. Kailangan natin malaman saan ba hinugot ito ni Jesus. Which leads me to the second source. How scripture reveals God's love. You know, Jesus was steeped in the Hebrew Bible, which is our Old Testament. And, and, and Jesus' view of creation was deeply saturated by the book of Psalms. At ano yung makikita mo sa book of Psalms? This is a po- poetry book. That Yahweh is a gracious God. Let's look at what Psalm 145 says. The Lord God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all He has made. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Ano yung napansin ninyo? Sinabi ba doon na God is gracious to some? Or uh, the Lord satisfy the desire of almost everything? Hindi, no? Ano sabi doon sa Psalm? That God is gracious to all. God is gracious to everyone. Even to those who do not deserve it na parang sinasabi niya sa atin na kahit malaki ang kasalanan mo or mali ang pam- pamumuhay mo sa nakaraan, may isang ama na laging nag-aalay ng pagpapatawad at pagmamahal para sa iyo. Yes. And Jesus, He believes this as well. That at some point in time, our deeds, our wrongdoings can, can catch up to us. Yung actions natin, yung mga maling kilos natin have consequences and will be held liable or accountable for it. But before that happens, His pure mercy overflows. Kaya si Jesus, He has this radical meal ministry. Pag tinignan mo yung buhay niya, sino mga kasama niya? Dito sa ministry nito, the meal ministry, the worst people in society. The tax collector, the prostitute, the adulterers, the drunkards. All of these people are welcome in this ministry. And as Jesus' followers, Jesus said, we're supposed to act like Him. He calls us to love our enemies because God blesses both His friends and his enemies. Love your enemies. What does the word love mean anyway? Ba ibig sabihin nito? Ito'y iba-iba sa iba't ibang tao. Sometimes it depends on their season of life. Ang bata, pag sinabi niya, I love mommy. I love Jollibee. Hindi daddy ha. Jollibee. Para mas mahal niya si Jollibee kaysa sa kanya daddy. What does that mean? It could mean preference. A teenager girl. Saan sa sabi ng teenage girl? I love him. Who is that him? Pag tinignan mo, sino ba yan? It's mukhang palaka, pero mahal niya. Love there could mean promise. A career person. I love my job. Grab it. Love here means passion. A married guy, husband will say, I love my wife, especially when she is sleeping. Love there means promise. 
Notice that I use only one verb in all these sentences. But can you see how confusing that verb is? Ibat iba, love love, pero ibat ibang ibig sabihin. This is the problem of the language, the English language. For most modern people, love is a feeling that happens to you. But there is a kind of love that is beyond feelings. I always say this, that feelings are your friends, but they are never your masters. You know, during this pandemic, a lot of negative feelings are going around. And if we always follow what we feel, believe me, we will be in trouble. Lagot tayo. Baka ang problema tayo ng manala. Pag palagi nilang emosyon ang sinusunod. That is why I have a program that I want you to be part of. This program is entitled Breakthrough, Taking Charge Over Anxiety and Fear. This, I want you to sign up. Sumali kayo dito, maniwala kayo, mabibless kayo sa program na ito. I will be joined here by two psychologists. These are professionals that love the Lord so much. And He loves you as well. He wants to journey. We want to journey with you. I'll be joined here by Dr. Gabi Deliaco and Patrick Gamo. So again, this breakthrough program will help you take charge over your worries, your anxiety, your fears, so that your feelings will only be your friends, but never your masters. So join us. Sign up now. So going back to love, that was the problem of love. The same word used in different meanings. But the ancient Greeks solved this problem. Meron silang iba't ibang salita para sa iba't ibang kahulugan ng pag-ibig. And in this passage, Jesus used the word agape. Agape was not primarily a feeling, no? Agape at its core is attitude and action. Imagine a Roman soldier. Ito na yung sundalo, sinampal ka. Tapos yung isang Roman soldier, binigay sa iyo yung bit-bit niya, pinapadala sa iyo, talimron. When Jesus said, love your enemies, it means agape your enemies. He was not asking you to be cheesy with them. Ha? Hindi niya sinabi, oh, pagkatapos ka sampalin, hug mo sila at sabi mo, mahal ko kayo. Jesus was not telling you to do that. It's impossible actually. Kasi ako sigurado ako, pag ginanun ka, nung panahon noon ha, sigurado ako niyan, ito yung gusto mong gawin. Kunin mo yung fishnet mo at itapon sa kanila at you will drop them to your boat and drop them to the lake. Yun ang gusto mo, bumawi. So what is Jesus saying to you here? Love your enemies. First, agape is attitude. Agape means that even if at the feeling level you hate them, you hate your enemies, Jesus wants you to change your attitudes toward them. Yung iba na yung, yung kilos mo sa kanila, yung, yung ugali mo sa kanila. Jesus wants you to see them the way God sees them. And how? They are still children of God. They are still made in God's image and likeness. Example. You hate your mother-in-law. Inis na inis ka sa bienan mong yan. No? You even call her bruha. Yun ang tawag mo sa kanya, si bruha. Diyan na naman. So instead of staying away because you want to follow Jesus, staying away from her, iniiwas mo na tuloy yung mga anak mo sa kanya, pati yung, kanyang, pati yung mga apo, mo, apo niya, yung mga anak mo sa pinapal. No. You change your attitude towards her. Why? Because she is a child of God. She is a child of God. Your mother-in-law is a child of God named Bruja. No? As you change your attitude, someday your feelings will follow. So again, Jesus wants you to see them the way God sees them. Everything will change. Second is this, agape is action. When you change your attitude, you will also change your action. You will serve them. And believe me, you will work for their well-being. Sa ikabubuti nila, pinagluluto mo na siya ngayon ng masarap. Dati hindi masarap. Ngayon masarap. Tapos pag binigay mo yung pagkain, tuwan-tuwa kang kinakain niya. 
Di ba? Hindi yung tuwan-tuwa kasi di kainin mo may lason yan. Hindi ka na naglalagay ng lason ngayon. <laughs> you serve them. And here's the clincher. You serve without expecting any payback. Na kahit na yung mother-in-law mo, masungit pa rin sa'yo, you continue to serve. And believe me, someday, hindi na bruha ang tawag mo sa kanya. Magbabago na ang tawag mo sa kanya. Ang tawag mo na sa kanya ay diwata. Diwata ng lagim. <laughs> Jesus continued, If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Tayong mga tao, nako, ano tayo, eh, mabait tayo sa pamilya natin, sa mga kaibigan, doon sa close circle na mabait tayo. Bakit? Let's be honest. Because we get a payback. May kapalit yan. But Jesus, listen my dear friends, Jesus is saying in His kingdom, it will be different. If you belong to His kingdom, every day, you must jump over tribal fences and love people on the other side of that fence, even those who have hurt you. You will be gracious to those who are not like you. You will be generous to those who do not like you. Let me give you a warning. You have to be ready with this warning. I know you know this already, pero I need to warn you. Loving your enemy is the hardest thing you will ever do. Kung tama ang sinabi ko, High five tayo. Ha? I-press nyo yung five dyan. Five. High five. High five. High five. Loving your enemy is the hardest thing you will ever do. But listen to this. Mark my words. Listen. You will never be more like God than when you love your enemy. You will never be more like God when you love your enemy. Mas nagiging kamukha ka ng Diyos pag binamahal mo ang hindi lang nagmamahal sa iyo. Pag binamahal mo na rin yung mga kaaway mo. Because your heart will beat with the very heartbeat of God the Father. If you read history, you will see there are people, heroes, who impacted the world with the greatest good. And who are they? They are those who love their enemies. I found this story. This is a true story. In the Christian catacombs of Rome. Ito yung mga nasa, yung mga, nasa kweba, kung saan nagtago mga Kristiyano. May mga kwento doon na nakasulat. And this was the story of Paulus. There was a rich man named Proculus. He, marami siyang slaves. Tapos, meron siyang slave na ang pangalan Proculus. Si, uh, Paulus, sorry. Si Proculus ang, may, ang owner, ang slave niya si Paulus. Tapos si Paulus, para mabait. So ginawa niya mayordomo. Steward over his whole household. Isang araw, si Proculus at si Paulus, pumunta sila sa slave market to buy some new workers para tumulong sa bahay. Tapos, may nakita si Paulus. Nung nakita niya itong matandang ito na mahina, Sinabi niya kay Proculus, Sir, bili natin yan. Sa, tinignan ni Proculus, talaga, hindi niya, ang, ang hinahina niya, ang tanda pa, wala nang kwenta yan. Sabi ni Paulus sa kanya, please sir, buy him. He is first, he is very cheap. Second, I promise that the work in your household will get done even better than before. Mas gaganda po ang trabaho pag kinuha natin ang taong yan. So si Proculus naman, takantaka, o sige, bili natin. Binili, dinala sa bahay. And you know, true enough, Paulus made good on his word. The work went better than ever. Gumanda lalo. Dahil yung sinabi ni Paulus sa kanya. Ito na. But Proculus observed that Paulus now worked for two men. Dalawang lalaki. Two men. Dalawa. Ano tong dalawa? Uh, nagtatrabaho siya para dito, kay Proculus, nagtatrabaho din siya para dito sa slave. Kaya ang taka niya, ano to? Bakit siya nagtatrabaho dun sa alipin? Di ba ang alipin dapat ang nagtatrabaho para sa kanya? 
And this is what he found out. Proculus confronted Paulus. Sabi niya, sino tong slave na to? Aminin mo. Bakit ganyan na lang ang pag-aaruga mo sa kanya? Di ba dapat siya ang mag-aaruga sa iyo? And Paulus smiled and said, uh, mahalaga po siya sa aking buhay. And Proculus said, bakit? Tatay mo ba siya? Siya ba ang ama mo na nawawala? Ay hindi po. Mas grabe ho. Ay sino siya? Teacher mo ba siya? Hindi ho. Sino siya? Kaaway ko po. Ano? Kaaway mo? Eh ba't ganyan ang true turing mo? And Paulus said, uh, He is my enemy. He is actually the man who killed my father and sold us, the children, to slavery. But Paulus continued, Proculus was speechless. Paulus continued, As for me, sir, I am a disciple of Christ who has taught us to love our enemies and to reward evil with good. You are never more like God when you love your enemies. And then Jesus continued his final verse there. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfect? Ako? Skin lang ang perfect sa akin. Wala nang iba. <laughs> But you know, I found out that perfect here or teleos in Greek is better translated as mature and complete. You know, if we keep following Jesus, we will one day grow up and become mature children of God. So this line is not just a command. It is a promise. Pangako ito, hindi ito utos na maging perfect ka lang. Hindi lang yun. Ito rin ay pangako. Pangako na ano, if you com- keep submitting to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will make you mature. And the more we mature, the more we become like Jesus. And what is the great sign of spiritual maturity? It is not measured by how much you pray, how much you know the truth. It is measured by how much you love your enemy. So again, my dear friends, you will never be more like God than when you love your enemy. Remember, once upon a time, You were God's enemy. But He loved you anyway. He embraced you anyway. Jesus reconciled us to Himself by His death on the cross. God agape His enemies. At tinatawag ka niya to do the same. He calls you to do the same. My dear friend, agape your enemy.